Hi there, and welcome to BoArt's Creative University's ECD course. This is the first lesson, and it will be on physical development. Children in this phase are quite active and busy. Their increasingly refined actions may largely be attributed to various physical and biological developments. In this lesson, we'll go through general physical developments such as height, weight, gross motor skill development, and fine motor skill development, as well as brain development. We'll also look at factors that influence physical development and health. All links, resources, and references will be put in the description below. We hope that these lessons will provide parents with a better understanding of their children. My name is Vincent Lee Lloyd. My mother started a company when she was pregnant with me, and now I'm working for that company. BoArts is an extracurricular company that specializes in developing whole brain creativity in children. All right, so without further ado, let's get cracking with this lesson. I'll be starting off with general physical development. The rapid physical development of infancy slows down somewhat in early childhood. The various body parts now also develop proportionally. The result is that at the end of early childhood, the body's proportions are similar to those of a young adult. The following are some aspects that I personally find pretty interesting of physical development during early childhood. Please keep in mind that there could be significant individual and group differences because of factors such as genetics and malnutrition. Start off with height and weight. During the first 30 months, there is an 80% increase in height and a 300% increase in weight. By the age of 4, the child has doubled his or her birth length. The average increase in mass during early childhood is approximately 2 kilograms per year and the increase in height is approximately between 5 to 8 centimeters per year. Physical proportions. Because of various changes such as the loss of baby fat and the increase in muscle and bone growth, preschool, sorry, preschoolers start losing their chubby appearance and start resembling a young child. Muscle and bone growth. Many of the changes in the preschool child's body proportions and appearance are caused by muscle and bone growth, which is, which is promoted by daily activities such as running, jumping, and the handing of objects. Teeth. By the end of the preschool years, children begin to lose their primary or baby teeth, which are then replaced by permanent teeth. Brain development. I find this very interesting. One of the most important aspects of physical development during early childhood is the development of the brain. By the age of three, the brain has already reached 75% of its total adult weight, and at the age of five, approximately 90%. More specifically, the frontal lobe areas of the cerebral cortex devoted to planning and organizing behavior develop rapidly. Heightened development in the left cerebral hemisphere supports children's expanding language skills. Different connections are also established among different brain structures to enhance balance and motor control, alertness and consciousness. As the brain is still developing, the possibility of plasti sorry, plasticity is still relatively high. Now, plasticity refers to the ability of one area of the brain to take over the function of another brain area that has been damaged, for example, by malnutrition or even a head injury. Now, lastly, perceptual development. Vision becomes increasingly important as a source of information. There is a rapid improvement in preschool children's ability to distinguish detail in the environment. The perception of figure ground improves rapidly between four and six years. This is the ability to distinguish clearly between objects on the sorry, this is the ability to distinguish clearly between the object on which attention is focused and the rest of the perceptual field. Children younger than five years tend to confuse letters that have similar perceptual features, for example, B and D, or M and W. The majority of children are able to distinguish between different letters at the age of six. Although babies show color preferences at an early age, age four seems to be the youngest age at which children constantly label colors correctly. However, it is not unusual for children as old as six or seven still to make mistakes when naming the primary colors. Since the eyeball is not fully developed until puberty, young children tend to be far-sighted. I can also just throw in here that BoArts is one of the only extracurricular companies that specifically, or not specifically, but we also bring in eye movements as a 
skill that can be developed during our lessons. Anyways, let's get back to it. So by the age of two or three, most children are able to hear soft sounds as well as adults do. Preschool children can also discriminate between speech sounds quite well. For instance, by the age of five, the ability of children to discriminate between sounds of different intensities is nearly as well developed as that of adults. Now, motor development. During early childhood, the motor skills of preschoolers improve considerably. There are three kinds of motor skills that are especially important during this stage. Cross motor skills, fine motor skills, and bilateral coordination. Now, cross motor skills involve the use of large muscles. For example, running the muscles used in climbing or running. By the age of three, children are able to run and jump very well. They enjoy such activities and will often repeat them over and over. It is therefore understandable why three-year-olds are regarded as having a higher activity level than at any other stage in their lives. Some um, interesting information. It is said that Shaka, the well-known Zulu king, punished adults who had committed minor offences by forcing them to imitate the activities of a three-year-old for a full day and that few could actually follow them. <laughs> Four-year-old children can f throw and catch objects such as a ball and can ride a tricycle. By the age of five, they are able to ride a bicycle and do gymnastics. These developments indicate stronger muscles, better physical coordination and improved balance. Fine motor skills. They refer to the use of small muscles in the hands and fingers, for example, the muscles used to um, play and mold with clay. Fine motor skills develop more slowly than gross motor skills. At the age of three, children still experience problems in fastening their buttons and shoelaces. At the age of four, most children are able to draw lines and circles and pictures. Most five-year-olds are able to cut out figures with a pair of scissors, fasten buttons and zips, eat with a knife and fork, and a spoon. The improved coordination of the small muscles and dexterity enables children to play simple musical instruments, draw more accurately, and begin writing. Bilateral coordination. This is the coordination of the left and right halves of the body. Now, bilateral coordination improves considerably during early childhood. For instance, when children color in a picture, they hold the pencil in one hand and the paper with the other. Also, for example, for with clay, when you um, squish the clay down and you have to cut out a certain shape, the one hand holds the stencil while the other hand um, cuts it out with a toothpick or some other sharp object. Children begin to show preference for using one hand rather than the other, and by the age of five, hand preference is usually fixed. Physical development influences cognitive, personality, and social behavior. For example, when children use blocks to build a tower, they gain an understanding of cognitive concepts such as balance, proportion, relationships, and shape. Motor development also enhances self-evaluation. For example, jumping, running, and skipping lead to an understanding of what the body can do. Being able to use their bodies in different types of play and physical activities enhances children's interaction with peers and therefore aids in their social and personal development. Yeah, so influences on physical development. Influences on physical development. Let's kick it off with heredity and hormones. The impact of heredity on physical growth is evident throughout childhood. For example, children's physical size and rate of growth are related to those of their parents. In addition, genes influence growth by controlling the body's proportion of hormones. The pituitary gland, located at the base of the brain, plays a critical role by releasing two hormones that induce growth. The first is the growth hormone, or GH for short, which is necessary for the development of all body-ish tissues. <laughs> Not issues, but tissues. Children who lack GH reach an average height of only 134 centimeters. When treated with injections of growth hormone at an early age, however, Growth hormone deficient children grow at a faster rate than if not treated. The second is thyroid stimulating hormone, or TSH. This stimulates the thyroid gland to release thyroxine. Now, thyroxine is necessary for the normal development of the nerve cells of the brain and for growth hormone to have its full impact on body size. Infants born with a thyroxine deficiency must receive it at once or they will be mentally disabled. 
all the children who develop a thyroxine deficiency grow at a below average rate. But since brain development is completed by then, the central nervous system is not affected. With early treatment, such children could catch up in body growth and eventually reach normal size. Moving on to nutrition. This is very important. Adequate nutrition is cardinal to optimal physical and psychological growth, and a lack of nutrition could result in severe impairment. Unfortunately, it is a factor that does not always receive the attention it deserves from mental health workers such as psychologists. Malnutrition is associated directly or indirectly with about 30% to 50% of all deaths worldwide, especially in developing countries. The reason for the high death toll is that malnourished children have lowered resistance to infection. Consequently, they are more likely to succumb to common childhood ailments such as diarrhea and respiratory infections. Children who suffer from undernourishment, especially between conception and the age of two, are at high risk of impaired cognitive development. Impaired growth as judged by inadequate weight or weight gain is common to malnutrition. Malnutrition also increases the risk of delayed motor and mental development, deficits in cognitive ability, morbidity, and, unfortunately, mortality. At the other end of the spectrum, obesity is rapidly emerging as a global epidemic that has profound physical and mental health consequences. The situation is aggravated by the fact that overweight children usually become overweight adults. Worldwide, childhood obesity has more than doubled in pre-adolescent children and tripled in adolescents in the past 30 years. The health consequences for obese children are risks of orthopedic, neurological, pulmonary, gastrointestinal and endocrine conditions. However, the psychological consequences of overweight and obesity have a greater effect than the medical implications have. Low self-esteem, lack of confidence and depression are often associated with overweight and obesity during childhood. On a, sorry, on a psych psychosocial level, these children often perceive themselves as physically unattractive. Therefore, they frequently believe that they are victims of gossip and social rejection. In a South African study on school children in Potchefstroom, it was found that overweight and obesity can have a significant influence on social acceptance, scholastic achievement, physical self-concept, and experience of athletic competence. As with the physical effects of obesity and being overweight, the psychological impact may extend into adulthood. Emotional well-being. The physical growth of the child is not only influenced by genetic biological factors such as heredity, premature birth and medical problems at an early age, but also by a variety of environmental factors such as the divorce of parents, continuing marital conflict in the home, unemployment of the parents and poverty. Psychologists generally accept that the stress resulting from such situations could have serious effect on children's physical growth and health. The condition in which children show delayed physical growth as a result of stress and emotional deprivation is referred to as psychosocial or deprivation dwarfism. Such children are of below average height, but not as a result of malnutrition. Instead, they experience emotional problems because their family environment is unstable and they are offered no emotional care or support. The mother or primary caregiver usually has several psychological problems and maltreats or neglects the child. Regular growth usually resumes when the child is removed from the negative environment. Now, it is not clear how psychos, sorry, it is not clear how psychological factors such as stress influence the physical growth of children. However, there are three hypotheses that are being suggested. Firstly, as a result of the interaction between the psyche and the body, stress may influence the functioning of the pituitary gland. The production of growth hormones may be affected, and therefore body growth may be negatively influenced. The second hypothesis is as follows. Stress influences the digestion processes as it has an effect on the secretion of digestive juices. This may not only hamper physical growth, but it could also lower the child's resistance to illness. And the third hypothesis says that stress influences the immune systems of preschoolers with the result that they are more susceptible to viruses which could influence physical development. And there's a nice little quote to end off this lesson. 
If you have any questions, please do send me an email if you think we can improve our lessons in any way. Please also let us know. And thank you so much for watching.